Hello and welcome to the sideboard here at Star City Games Worcester. My name is Ruben Bressler and I am joined by Anthony Lowry, Star City Games writer. Hello guys, how you doing? Founder of Team Chandra. Yes, general manager. Right, general manager. But this week we're taking a break from Chandra. During the first week of Theros Standard, we're taking a break from that and playing what I think is the enemy, the number one deck that everyone's sort of been trying to work on, sort of tweaking. The deck that you have to beat week one, which is green-white aggro. Yep. Uh, the deck that won Pro Tour Dragon's Maze, picked up a lot of good new tools in the new set. So we're just going to break down what this deck can do. We're going to start with the one drops. And so the one drops in green white aggro, a lot of people are playing things like Elvish Mystic. Um, you've gone for a much more aggressive attack here with Dryad Militant and Experiment 1. Rather than the ramp, you find that the power on turn 1 is more important. Right. Um, so there are two ways you can go with green white. As you said, you can go the Elvish Mystic plan to like pump out turn 2 smiters and turn 3, 4 drops and whatnot. The other route is to be aggressive with Experiment 1 and Dryad Militant. I opted to go with the more aggressive route because I felt like the bigger problem with the uh, bigger deck was reach. So being able to dish out the first two to four, possibly six points of damage early, I felt was, was what the deck really needed other than like a turn two locks on Smiter. And even if you do have your, even like a turn three Avenue Worm, it's not particularly great against those decks if you're drawing Elvish Mystics afterward. Sure. Whereas even a Dry Militant isn't the worst, like it's still two damage. Right, it's a fine top deck right. later in the game. Exactly. And it can still get pumped by Celeste and Charm and whatnot. Like every single point matters. So you definitely want to try to get like those first few points in early. Info. Now the real reason to play this deck are, is the two drop slot. Yes. We have Voice of Resurgence. Everybody knows how great that card is. We have Scavenging News took over standard for the entire length of while it's been in standard, and its new friend, Fleece Mane Lion, the new monstrous lion is brand new to standard. 3-3 three, three for 2, strict upgrade for Watch Wolf. Uh, talk to me about the two drop slots. There are also some other options, like Call of the Conclave, for example. Right. So, I actually think Scavenging News is the worst of the two drops, mostly because you don't have cards like Snapcast and Angel Flashback cards anymore. It's still a fine card against aggro, which is why you still want some number, like, it's a fine five drop, six drop, for example. Um, Horse of a Surgeon, another card that's excellent against aggro and control for reasons that we've seen before. And Fleece May Lion is another card that's also really good against aggro, especially the Burning Tree Emissary decks. They're playing two twos, you're playing a three three. Um, the Monstrous ability is more of a catch 22 ability against the uh, blue X control decks, because most of the time you don't even really monstrous it. You can use that, you can use the threat of Monstrous to inconvenience their plays. So oftentimes I'll just attack for three, go. Attack for three, go. Because if they do anything, you have a 4-4 indestructible hexproof. So I felt like four voids for surgeries, four fleece main line, and two scavenging use is sort of the right number. Um, Call of the Conclave is fine. I feel like if you're going the Tristani route, um, but I opted not to have that here because I wanted more like durability in my sure. drops. And there's even, uh, I've seen some lists running something like Daring Skyjack. Yes. There's, I mean, there's so many ways to go with green-white. It's one of the main reasons why the archetype is so powerful. Another big reason to play the deck is just the raw power you get right, right after turn two, right. pretty much. Yeah. With uh, Loxodon Smiter, Advent of the Worm, two of the heaviest hitters in standard, and their new friend, Boom Seder. Boom Seder, yes. There's, it's an M, not an N at the end. Uh, Boom Seder, uh, the, the new addition from Theros, able to team up either as bestowed or just as another attacker on either of them, really. Right. It's an excellent, like, it's another flash card that, like, being able to turn four, Avenue of the Worm, into turn five, attack before damage, bestow, is just incredible. Like, that ability is. Unreal and it's one of the reasons to play Boom Seder. And it also actually makes your fleece main line better because it gives you another play to do while they're while you're inconveniencing. Sure, so you can you can leave up your five mana and your opponent just thinks you have fleece main line, but you have the boom seder. Right, exactly. Uh, it also gives you wrath protection, which this deck can can possibly have trouble with the Esper matchup. Right. Um, Although vo things like Voice of Resurgence and the Instant Speed threats certainly help that. In order to bolster those threats we already have, we have a couple uh, other additions to the deck. A Johnny Caller of the Pride and Spear of Helion. Right. So there's a split between those two colorless white-white spells. Talk to me about those two cards and the strengths. So, as I said before, the problem with this deck was Reach. Um, I couldn't... I was having a lot of trouble beating Stormbreath Dragons and Bloodbearer Abyssal. 
So I was trying everything. I was trying Elspeth, but Elspeth wasn't really working because it kills my locks on my spine or Abin of the Worm. Um, I was trying, I was playing Deadly Recluse at some point because I just couldn't think of anything. And a friend of mine just basically said, why don't you just kill them, like go over the top. I'm like, what do I go over the top with? And I just saw a Johnny and I was like, huh. Like there is no Silver Blade Paladin in the format and this is the closest thing that you have to that. So being able to play a Johnny along with your hard hitting creatures is just the reach that you need. Yeah, and also giving flying is a, is a real good uh, right. boon, no pun intended, to your <laughs> boon satyrs and your advent of the worms to be able to jump over the top. Right, exactly. Um, and the Spear of Heliod, I felt like was, a, didn't have diminishing returns that the third of Johnny would have. So, and it's also I think a little bit better in the mirror match because it kills their guys, like it yeah. keeps them from Absolutely one of the most powerful cards in the mirror match. We've right. already seen many formats pass that the glorious anthems are a huge factor in, in mirror matches. Exactly. And this one being able to kill attackers like Advent of the Worm, no matter how big their toughness is. Right. Big exactly. Big. Yep. So I don't want to go too deep into sideboards because it's early in the format, so we don't know exactly what we're playing against yet. But one card I do want to point out is Glare of Heresy. For the mirror match, among other things, also takes out Detention Sphere and Chain of the Rocks from the control decks. Yes. Uh, Glare of Heresy, not as good as Celestial Purge was back in the day, being an instant as yeah. opposed to Glare of Heresy being a sorcery is a huge deal. But this is able to take out big things like Hundred Handed One that you might run into from blue, white control decks, things like that. Glare of Heresy, a real good addition to this deck. Yeah, the big thing about Glare of Heresy is that it changes, like the green white decks in the standard that we've seen before. Like, it changes how you sideboard against those decks now because you used to bring in Unflinching Courage, but now that strategy doesn't work too much anymore because your Unflinching Courage, you gotta be like, okay, I'll take the damage and then I'll glare you the next turn. So, I actually think the fact that Glare of Heresy is in this format completely changes the mirror, um, as well as being uh, good against the aforementioned Detention Sphere, Chain Spell Rocks, and whatnot. Yeah, so. absolutely. The good thing about Glare of Heresy for this deck, though, is although Advent of the Worm is a green white card, the worm itself is just mono green. Yes. So there Very you go. Important. And there's there's so many builds to this deck. You can run Soldier for Pantheon. You can run Daring Skyjack, as I mentioned earlier. You can run a much more controlling version with Archangel of Thune, Tristani in the main deck. Green White is going to be a huge player in this metagame, and we've yet to see, obviously, which version it is. Anthony's hoping it's his Hopefully. today here at the very first Standard Open yep. with Theros Leo. Anthony Lowry, thank you for joining me in the sideboard. Thank you very much. And we'll be right back from Star City Games Worcester.